Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and space flight. I'm your host, Will Walden, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Chinese military on the dark side of the moon. Now, just recently, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson testified in front of the House Appropriations Committee. He talked about various subjects, such as the Artemis program, uh, Mars return sample missions, but one of the most intriguing ones was when Bill talked about how China is sending rovers and probes to the dark side of the moon, the other side of the moon, where NASA hasn't gone yet. He thinks that they are sending some sort of military apparatus to the other side of the moon. Now, it's speculation on Bill's part. He doesn't know exactly what China is sending, but he believes that China is working within their constraints of their space program to send rovers and also maybe uh, orbiters around the moon for military purposes. And I don't think he is wrong here. That's my own personal opinion. I believe Bill Nelson here. He's a straightforward kind of person and he must have some sort of data to back this up. Now what I'm going to do, I was going to show you this testimony from Bill and you can make your own conclusion from this. I believe there's a possibility that China is nefarious in their actions by sending rovers and probes to the dark side of the moon, mainly because NASA isn't going to the dark side of the moon. We're going to the South Pole of the moon for the Artemis program. Artemis 3 will see the first people land on the moon in around 50 years. And Bill, in his talk with the Appropriations Committee, says that China may be able to put boots on the lunar surface by 2030. So just a few years from now that uh, China could be sending people to the moon's surface. We will hopefully beat them back to the moon. That would be great, but we're going to be in far different places. They're going to be on the far side of the moon and NASA astronauts and international astronauts will be on the south side of the moon. Bill Nelson states also they want to go to the moon uh, south side because that's where the water is. I'll let you watch this and make up your own mind. China has made extraordinary strides, especially in the last uh, 10 years, but they are very, very secretive. Uh, we believe that a lot of their so-called civilian space program is a military program. Uh, and I think, in effect, we are in a race. Uh, China, uh, for example, has said, and they usually telegraph what they're going to do. Their latest date that they have said that they're going to land is 2030. But that keeps moving up. And so I think it's incumbent on us to get there first and to utilize our research efforts for peaceful purposes. We now have upwards of 40 nations that have signed the Artemis Accords which is a common sense set of declarations of the peaceful uses of outer space. Uh, my concern would be is if China got there first and suddenly said, uh, okay, this is our territory, you stay out. That's not the peaceful uses. Uh, there is obviously, you don't want to interfere with each other. But don't go in and declare that this whole territory is suddenly yours. And by the way, anybody that doubts that, look what China's done in the South China Sea with the Spratly Islands. So that's a quick answer to you, Mr. Chairman. We're not going to lose that glo global edge, uh, but you got to be realistic that China is really throwing a lot of money at it, and they've got a lot of room in their budget to grow. <clears throat> Uh, and their science is good. Their engineering is good. And the proof's in the pudding. They now have a space station up there. It's got three elements. 
they usually have three taikonauts, which is what they call the uh, Chinese astronauts. And uh, uh, I think that uh, we just better not let down our guard. Now, you know, we have utilized NASA because of the fascination with space around the globe. NASA is usually welcomed in most countries. And we have gladly reached out to other countries uh, with not only goodwill, but a lot of practical things that we can do to help other countries. And it's not just necessarily in space. It may be our assets in space that are looking at the earth. For example, we can, we can look at a farmer's field and we can tell what the moisture content is there. Uh, we can predict floods. We can predict droughts. We can look at a forest and determine if there is disease in the forest, and we're looking from space. And therefore, that forest is subject to fire because it, it's diseased trees. Uh, we've gotten involved uh, with regard to the wildfires, of being able to try to head those off uh, by giving uh, the cautionary note to the fire service. So there's a lot that we are doing. I would hope that China, the Chinese space program would come to its senses and understand that civilian space is for peaceful uses. But we have not seen that demonstrated by China. There's not a hitch at all in our relationship with the Russians in civilian space. Get in the military space, you got a whole different thing. Uh, but it is something that we have to be concerned about. So in our budget request to you is the fact that uh, we desperately need in the emergency supplemental appropriations, once you get through with this first tranche that you're considering, there's another one that's coming. It's been blessed by the White House, and it's our request not only to uh, repair the damaged deep space antennas on Guam when the typhoon hit Guam, mm -hmm. and that happened to DOD as well, but also an emergency uh, appropriations request for a deorbiting vehicle so that we can start now and in six years when we want to deorbit the space station. And remember, this thing is 120 yards long. It's as long as a football field from goalpost to goalpost. And we've got to get it down safely. What happens in the next six years? Are we still going to have the same relationship that we can get it down with the Russians? We can't count on that. So we've got to start now to build that U.S. deorbit vehicle that could get the whole station down safely so it won't hit anybody or anything. 